I'm a Athena, just, you know, so talking to all of you guys, you know, just thinking about the needs and priorities, just talk to me a little bit about the needs and priorities of, you know, the district you're running for, the state as a whole. Um, like, what are some of the needs and priorities you're seeing or you're hearing from listening and talking to people? Because it sounds like everyone has been relatively, or not relatively, has been very involved in the communities they seek to serve. So what are some of the needs and priorities of your area? Um, and then, you know, how do you prioritize competing issues and interests? Yeah, so in, in both my district and, and the state, uh, one of the top issues in Arizona is education. Mm -hmm. Um, and I would say another issue is healthcare. And so there's two things that are going on right now. So um, our legislature, and it's right now it's majority Republican, and the governor is also Republican. And our legislature just has a stubborn unwillingness to fund education. Uh, last year, they completely eliminated community colleges um, in Maricopa County, which is the county I live in, from the budget. Uh, and every single year um, since the recession and also before the recession they've been cutting K-12 education. Um, when, I was, uh, when I was in college uh, they actually opened up the budget in the middle of the fiscal year to make cuts to education and health care. But, but here's the thing, right? While they're making mm -hmm. cuts um, to education and health care, there's the same exact uh, number going towards tax cuts for corporations. Oh. So, okay. yeah, so taking it, you know, when we talk about special interests, hitting the interests of kids versus corporations that really don't need a, a big tax cut. Um, but what, uh, what's been really big, and I, I need to update it on my Facebook because it just passed finally, um, but uh, yesterday or two days ago, the Republicans um, voted against Kids Care, which is the state um, insurance program for for children who are uh, do not qualify for Medicaid, um, but their parents aren't wealthy enough to have health insurance coverage for the kids. Um, and so, if that actually had passed, like if if they hadn't gone back today um, to vote to include Kids Care. We would become mm -hmm. the only state in the country that doesn't have a health insurance program for kids. And not only that, um, but Arizona didn't have to front a cent. The federal government was going to pay for all of it. So, uh, you know, we just see the, it, it, at what point is it just ideology? Um, right. And, and some of the things that, uh, you know, the, uh, some Republicans were saying is that, oh, well, if we, uh, if we give health care to kids, then they're going to expect handouts in the future. What? I, I, <laughs> look it up on Twitter. But this, this is like, um, you know, this is the thing. And this is really exciting. Isela and I were talking earlier. And, um, you know, Arizona is becoming a light purple state. We're not okay. dark purple yet. Um, but we're becoming a light purple state, you know, so it, it's just things are changing and um, the other thing is that 30% uh, of people, and I think this is in the country, I don't think this is just limited to Arizona, but 30% 30, 30 uh, of non-white, so people of color, have right. been registering, the, um, which is an increase because you look at a decade or two ago, it was only 2%. Okay. So, um, but really, it's just uh, education, and that's both uh, K-12 education, early childhood education, higher education. I've talked to young voters at the door who dropped out of college early because, you know what, they couldn't afford college, and they just didn't want to incur the debt. I've talked to Dreamers um, because Prop 300 a few years back decided to charge out-of-state tuition for undocumented students, and so they just were out of luck. They couldn't go to college anymore. And even though they're bright, brilliant minds, they don't have college degrees because of it. Um, so that is the number one issue in Arizona. Okay. Okay. And how have you, I know you said that you have got into, and I'll try to remember to ask Chris the same question. I know you're saying because you did not have to um, same time trying to worry about sucking up to donors, basically, so to speak. Right? How have you? How have you said to your team? How have you guys been able to just reach out into you know the community? Like what? What? What has been working? What maybe does not work as much? You no. Know, 
one of the biggest challenges we seem to have, especially when we're talking about, you know, voters of color, is really getting out the vote, is, you know, you know, getting out necessary civic and voter ed education information, so to speak, right? Because it almost seems like to get people involved and engaged in the process, we have to have, like, you know, some type of education and, and, and discussion to kind of, like, help people come along with the issues. How do you see kind of that process um, where you are? Because um, you said you're in Maricopa County, which is already... Yeah. Which, I'm not even going to ask you about all the primary, the prior <laughs> primary <laughs> drama. Yeah. But, well, but how yeah. have you seen kind of that, that engagement at the local level? So the beautiful thing um, is that in my district, so my district comprises uh, of three major areas. So Tempe, which is where um, Arizona State University is housed. Okay. Arizona State University is the largest public university in the country. Um, there's West Mesa, and then we have the Salt River Pima Reservation, um, and that's pretty much the bulk of District 26. And uh, the great thing about my district is that um, for the past 10 years at least, my district has been electing clean elections candidates. Oh, okay. Candidates. Yeah, and so, um, you know, there's been a lot of grassroots engagement that has happened historically, and, you know, we, we try every, every election cycle to make sure that the, that the voters know that this is a priority. This is the progressive way to run for office. It's, a, it's an option. In our district, we prove that clean election candidates can get, um, can actually win. Um, but the thing that made clean elections hard is, and I couldn't tell you the year, maybe 2012, um, but the Supreme Court, so uh, there was a challenge against Arizona's clean election system, and it was based on matching funds. And so the way clean elections was originally passed is that um, so, you, so you get a, a base amount of funding, but then the moment your opponent, if your opponent's a traditional candidate, the moment your opponent exceeds the amount of funding that you got from the state, the state will match that, I think, up to like six times. And so it was to create equitable um, speech. It was to make sure that, because I don't think money is speech, money is power, and it was making sure that you were on an equal playing field, regardless of whether you're traditional or, um, or, or clean. And so what the Supreme Court did is they struck down the matching funds measure. Um, and what we saw is that a lot less candidates since then have been using clean elections and have just been deciding to run traditionally. Um, and, you know, like, there, there's, there's Democrats who run traditionally, and, you know, I, I think that they do have uh, their, their communities um, at, in their hearts, you know, and, and try to do the right thing. But it's always hanging over your head of uh, this, this organization, this PAC, this individual wrote me a big check, and will, will they give me that big check again for my next election cycle? And for, for me as a clean elections candidate and speaking with other clean uh, elections um, elected officials, if, you're, if your funding is coming from your constituents and from the state, then ultimately you're accountable to your constituents and to the state. So, okay. um, but we are supporting, uh, it's called the Clean and Accountable Elections Act, and so it's a citizen in initiative um, that would increase the amount of funding clean elections candidates would get in Arizona. And so, um, you know, in that, in that long-term vision of making clean elections the option uh, and the go-to for how candidates run for office, I think that if this initiative, A, gets on the ballot, it's very strict in Arizona. Arizona is notorious for its voter suppression laws. Um, and B, passes, it's going to be huge for our state. I completely appreciate uh, what Christy has said and, you know, and the conversation. Um, and I, I agree that we're not single issue candidates, but I think the thing that's critical and the thing that's key is the values that we stand on. Right. And so when I'm listening to, to you all speak, like to me, the big value that keeps popping into my head and we really need to bring it back to the forefront. I know we've shied away from this word, but it's equality. So in Arizona, and, and Arizona is one of the um, leading states for uh, women in elected office uh, mm -hmm. at the state legislature, and our state legislature has 30% uh, women representation, which is apparently huge compared to other states, right? Um, but why is that? Why is it not 50%? You know, and then when you look at um, the women who are in the legislature, there's no, um, to, to my research thus far, there's no women under the age of 30. 
Um, so we're complete, even though that there's there's young men who are under the age of 30 representing uh, in the state legislature. But you know, when we think about equality, like if you didn't have access to a high quality education, right, or healthcare, or nurturing adult, you know, just so many things. How can you compete in this global economy? How can you give back right. to your community? Like, where is your place going to be in the world? If you go outside and because of your gender or your race, you have fear of getting harassed and assaulted, what does that mean to all of us? And will we stand idly by and let that happen to our neighbors next door, our brothers and sisters, our cousins? You know, and so I think the issues are important. But at, at the ground of all of it, I, I really do think that the big value is equality. We all deserve health care. We all deserve clean water. You know, right. we were talking about Flint earlier. We all deserve a, a robust education. And then the last point I want to make, so that, and, and the reason that I keep pivoting back to education is because of the conversations I've had, not only in my own district, but throughout Arizona. So I worked for the Girl Scouts and did a lot of um, organizing in northern Arizona. Mm -hmm. And rural communities, um, which a lot of northern Arizona is rural, really have a lot less resources um, than urban communities, which is the district that I work right. in. And in one small town, not only did they have to, because of the cut to education at the state legislature, not only did they have to cut school down to four days a week, but they no longer could afford to teach the kids science. Are those kids going to have great jobs in the 21st century? Are they going to be able to go to wow. college? And it's all because of their zip code. It's all because of where they were born. Those kids didn't decide not to learn science. Like, that society is deciding for them. And so it's equality. It's equality, equality, equality. Everyone deserves an equal shot mm -hmm. to, to lead healthy, productive, pursuit of happiness, happy lives. And that's what we are all committed to as millennial candidates. And, you know, I mentioned that Estelle LeBlanc is my running mate, and, you know, she's not a millennial. And so we get that this is cross-generational work. We get that this is, we're all in this together. So, and with that, I got to, I got to hop off. Okay, thank you. I'm so, so happy you were able to join us. I'm definitely going to stalk you now on Twitter. No, I'm sure I'm not going to stalk you on Twitter. But I'm definitely going to check you out on Twitter. Um, and I gave a shout out to your running mate, too, on Twitter. So, Thank you so much for joining us, and you enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you, guys, and good yeah. luck on everyone's races. Bye. Thank you, Dakina. Take care. Thanks.